and welcome to Interchange TV. Today I'm absolutely stoked to be interviewing the creator of all of the wonderful artwork that you've seen throughout Interchange, Marike. Hello. <laughs> so animated, and even in your demeanor. <laughs> so um, Marike, a lot of this course has been about following your passion, about uncovering what it is that you love to do. And, you know, I think there's this myth out there that, you know, when somebody sees somebody who's successful in their career that they've, you know, intentionally <laughs> gone after that career path and I think you know a lot of the speakers have kind of serendipitously by accident kind of ended up in the careers that they're in so um, from your point of view um, you know having gone through that process and you know what sort of advice would you give to the students who are about to maybe graduate this year or next year in the next couple of years about kind of finding that purpose and why it's important hmm. Well, that's a great question, Avis, because I think all of us are going to spend the rest of our lives looking for purpose yeah. or what you really want to do. I think the most important thing is, A, what we've already done the last couple of years is realize that you can do a life with purpose yes. and that you can actually do work that's fulfilling and will pay the rent as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's already a big leap. Like, there's, there's heaps of people just doing stuff because they have to pay the mortgage or they have to feed their kids. Or they have, yeah. And we're not creating a world that's actually full of fun and joy yeah. and beauty. And I often think... What would happen, it's just like a theory, like what would happen if everyone in the world would, would do what they love? Like an economist would probably say, oh, yeah, that's going to go into shit, it's not yeah. possible, but just realize it. Would there still be sweatshops? No. Would there still be people making clothes? Yes, you know, it might automatically become fair trade, like mm -hmm. a baker would love to bake. Like we might not have coal mining companies because no one wants to get that stuff out of the earth. Yeah. So I think there's a real power in doing that. Then the first, the next question is, how do you start doing this? Yes, that? and that's important, right? And the students, uh, you already know that um, how to find your purpose. So think of what is the stuff that you loved doing when you were a kid? Mm -hmm. Write those down. Like, yes. I love drawing, but I forgot. Mm -hmm. I forgot because I was in uni, I was in psychology, I had no idea, no inspiration, I had a white page. And it's something and kids do, right? Yeah. I didn't draw for <laughs> yeah. seven years during uni. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I worked for a corporate, but I'm also glad that I rediscovered it. I think there's a power in... What would did you love before you start? You had to do all these things. Yeah. So that's a cool thing. And next, like, how can you act on that? We talked about how can you take a next step. So identify the things you love and are close to your heart. And it can also be something that other people find boring. You know, maybe you're, you just love accounting. Yeah. Or I love IT. I don't. But you might think, oh, I yeah. hate illustration. Mm -hmm. But make make those like put them on your wall, on a poster above your bed and think about those three balloons that you have. Mm -hmm. You've got three balloons and those are the things I'm going to keep alive and I'm going to take small steps every day or every week or at least in two years to do something about it. And I think there's a power in thinking small yeah. and not too big. So what is a small thing you can do yeah, brilliant. To be creative or yeah. whatever. And I loved what you, like leading on from that, I think creativity often comes um, from the gaps in between the things that we're busy doing. And we talked a little bit about busyness on a different interview. Um, I loved how you talked about, you know, can you work less and explore more? Can you talk to that a little bit more? Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. So what I did, uh, which is really simple if you talk about it now, but it was quite life-changing when I tried it, is um, I had a really great job at Unilever, and at some point I thought, oh, it's a great job, but if in 10 years I just sold ice cream for 10 years, although it's really good ice cream, I'm not gonna be where I'm not gonna be me. And that's the yeah. thing. We're multi-dimensional people. And what mm -hmm. makes you you, what makes you special, what will make you successful, is finding out a kaleidoscope of stuff you can do. Yeah. And that's why I said, oh, I can actually come by, I can pay my rent when I work four days. Yeah. Which is a fortunate position, I do realize that. But can you find something that you can do in four days? Well that one day is freedom. Yeah. And even even it's different, like if you do it on the weekend or on a Friday, like you don't have to visit your grandma or you know, uh, help a friend out or anything. Just being on a Friday morning and thinking, I should be working, <laughs> but now I'm doing, what do you want to do? Things that you want to do, yeah. yeah. Like I, used, I, I was going to paint, but maybe you want to, I don't know, listen to the radio or be inspired. Play music, play music. do anything, yeah. Do anything that counters the stuff that you're already doing and, mm -hmm. and see in the end, like how that come, can come together, yeah. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, you talked a lot about just kind of going with the flow and, you know, just, 
really just seeing kind of what happens and what unfolds. Um, a lot of people might find that a little bit difficult because I think throughout uni, you know, you're very much planning, plotting and planning. And I think, you know, the traditional interview questions are like, where do you see yourself in five years? You know, from somebody who hasn't plotted and planned their career, you know, how would you answer that question in an interview, do you think? Hmm. Um, I loved what, what Claudia, who was obviously like a queen of interchange, um, did, said last week, and actually learned from that, she said, only plan your next step. Yeah. I was still thinking, like, where am I going to be in five years? Because I did that. I did, you know, I did all that to get into Unilever, and I need to be there, and then I needed a better job. And at some point I thought, but I don't want to be a marketing manager. Yeah. I don't want to do that. And mm. it, it took, for me, it took moving to the other side of the world and having nothing to lose. Yes, that's a huge thing. Like yeah. I, I moved to the other side of the world, I knew no one, had no home, no friends, no nothing, and I thought, I've got nothing to lose. Mm. And that makes you change your mindset. So how yeah. could you change your mindset without having to move to the other side of the world? Yeah. I think I've got nothing to lose. What would I, would I do if money was no issue? What would I do if I could do anything I wanted? And you're, you're not going to be there right away, but only like, only like writing it down and yeah. looking at it every week will make you, will help you, will go that far. And I think even in an interview with a company, even, even at Unilever, for example, like who will they hire? Will they hire someone that says, yeah, uh, well, I want to be a marketing manager and then I'm going to be CEO and then I'm going to be this. Yeah. Or will they hire someone that says, well, actually, this is what know, I want to do next. This is what I do, really want to do now because I want to learn about, you mm -hmm. know, I want to learn about leadership, I want to learn about marketing, I want to learn about this. Yeah. But in the end, I want to change the world. Yeah. In the end, I've got this mission. And they will love that. They will hire you for that instead yeah. of holding it against you. So try it out and really be you and be in everything with your heart, even in, at uni, even at big corporate careers, and amazing things will happen. Really great. Well, that's actually some really great advice for people going out into the world and really figuring out you know, how to answer those difficult interview questions and really figure out, you know, where their place in the world is. And, and I think, you know, just a reminder to you folks that, you know, the future doesn't necessarily look how you think it might right now and just go with the flow and see what happens. There's magic in the future, I reckon. And can yeah. I ask with one of my favorite quotes that really inspired me to do yeah. this, which is, um, don't ask what the world needs, but ask what makes you come alive, because the yes. world in the end needs more people who have come alive. On that note, thank you for joining us for this episode of Interchange TV, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, bye. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>